have a quick little thought experiment. When we put things into a box, we remove the context. It's just the nature of putting things into a box. In other words, just because we put things into a box doesn't mean it doesn't have context. Doesn't mean it doesn't have origins. So, with this in mind, well, we can apply the same concept in a two-dimensional space. That's a three-dimensional sort of model. To make it easier to understand, let's bring it down to a two-dimensional model. So anything that we put into frame, not a box, but a frame, is subject to the same situation, which is anything that we frame removes it from context. Or just because we frame something doesn't mean that it doesn't have context, origin. Now, if we can agree on this, I think a popular philosophical axiom on this is uh, you can take the man out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the man. I don't know. So something along those lines. But to focus on what I'm saying here is that just because we frame something a certain way doesn't mean that we're seeing things clearly. There has to be context. What we have to watch out for here is that anything can be taken out of context. Anything could be isolated and put into a box. This conversation I'm having with you right now is happening within a frame. Philosophically speaking, there's endless arguments to what is being said right now. However, they are outside of the frame. What we're focusing on right now is what's in the frame. For example, if I were to relay an experience that I had, well, with some of you, it would be taken one way, comprehended, viewed in one way, and to others, perhaps those of you that know me and have context, would take my experience in another way. Now, before I get too lost, what I'm referring to is something that I call dimensional thinking. I didn't make it up. You know, a lot of times when we're trying to break things down, we take them out of dimension, we flatten them, or um, we've got two dimensions, even one dimension, straight line, right? These are tools, these dimensions are tools to help us understand things on particular levels. So you've got one dimension, two dimension, three dimension, which is pretty much, you know, what I, I would assume that most of us are uh, at least operating in. Then there is, of course, four dimensions. And I think we can all agree on a four dimensions. Science has, from my last uh, understanding, 11 dimensions. But I think we can say this fourth dimension is um, the dimension of thought, right? The metaphysics, feeling, intellect. Let's be clear, I am personally making this association. And this is not a physics observation. It's more of a metaphor, you know, when you use the term osmosis or evolve, you know, there are very loose ways of using these terms. I'm using the term loosely. And there's probably way better sources than myself to explain the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is a difficult thing to comprehend, let alone um, to manipulate. Once you do understand this concept of multiple dimensions, especially that of the fourth dimension, then you realize how it could be used for problem solving. I immediately was using it back in the day. I called it the 4D flow, which is just a method of 
transitioning between stand-up fighting and grappling. Yeah, I mean, the 4D flow was all about transitioning from one technique to another that seemed disassociated, but wasn't. So being able to think in four dimension or to behave in a four dimensional flow was very tangible in martial arts. Then of course the 4D flow really extended in to the emotion and the intelligence, not just technique and the actions. In martial arts, this concept of four dimensional flow, 4D flow, sort of made it seem like you're a superhuman. There is a great benefit that can be had if you can apply this fourth dimensional or dimensional thinking and apply it philosophically or intellectually. All right, with this thought experiment in your back pocket now, I, I need to backpedal a little bit because I did a unhoused fallout video, a homeless solution video, you might see that here. Issue has been put into a frame. It's been put into a box. It's really hard to do the issue justice with just one or two videos or one or two perspectives. So one of the perspectives I'd like to take out of the box, or perhaps I'd like to put into frame, depending on where you are relative to the box. And that is this. So if I have a clip, I'll put it here. When you see this, there's an often immediate reaction of, oh my God, the homeless, we got a problem here. What a lot of you do not see or may see, and it just doesn't really come into the equation, but I see it all the time. It's often people, let's call them the housed, that look at those encampments or look at those situations and then take advantage of it. In other words, yes, the housed more, more than I really would like to admit to, the housed often are going to the unhoused communities and dropping their litter there to save some money or maybe effort. So a lot of the piles that you see here, some of them undoubtedly have been created by the housed community as well as the unhoused community. Perhaps they've even dumped more of their trash into those unhoused communities. Again, dumping stuff here in California is very expensive. And I'm sure the housed community have their justifications for dumping their trash in the unhoused communities. So I think what I wasn't getting across and that I am trying to get across in this video is that life and everything in life is highly dependent upon how you frame it, how you package it, but I think we can get a lot more out of it if we approach all things in a multi-dimensional sense. In other words, we can look right at something, that's one dimensional straight line, we can two-dimensional, create a two-dimension of it, good, bad, right, wrong, in the box, out, out of the square, into the square, not box, we're not there yet. Three-dimension, is it in the box, is it, is it out of the box, is it worth keeping, is it worth not keeping, right, three dimensions, talking about worth. Now, with all of those emotions and with all of that prejudice, with all of that predisposition, with all that cognitive bias, how do we escape it with fourth dimensional thinking? How do we empathize with fourth dimensional thinking? Now, like my mentor, the amazing Randy said, it's good to keep an open mind. And that's kind of what I think of when I think of fourth dimensional thinking, sort of having a more open mind. But as Randy would say, it's good to have an open mind. Just don't let the brain fall out. 
an open mind also reminds me of more breaking out of the square and into more spherical sort of con concepts which are more real i say more real than the fictitious straight line right again dimensional thinking is just a tool i mean it's kind of interesting because we live in a three-dimensional reality in order to understand that reality we often have to especially in the immediate sense we often have to break things down into that two dimension or one dimension and then to escape from the restrictions of that dimensional thinking that first second and third dimensional thinking we have this fourth dimensional thinking ability it's really cool what do you think is there something actually in physics that i'm sort of ignorant of that may or may not apply to what i'm talking about here again my understanding of the actual physics of the fourth dimension is elementary at best something that strikes me that seems to be somewhat connected painting i'm really a novice painter but well, one of the things that I noticed in the study of painting on the most basic level, light and dark and light and dark and how these variables of light and dark and light and dark is really what painting and visual art is all about on its most basic binary frame by frame level. So again, using metaphors here, light and dark, good or bad. As we pull out in the macro and as we pull in on the micro, we see these layers, metaphorically speaking, of light and dark, of good and bad, good and bad. All right, so I got to end this video. I am not suggesting that the world become over empathetic. However, we do need to understand things with a certain amount of empathy because that's what allows us to problem solve. So being able to think in and out of these various dimensions at will and in a controlled manner, I think is a great skill. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Check out my new website called Zeigler8.com. It's my hub to all things Z. And of course, leave a like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thanks for watching this video all the way through. It's the best thing you can do to support the channel.